Yo, what is up guys? Mike Troid coming back at you with another shiny hunting tutorial. Haven't done one of these in quite a while, so I do appreciate the patience for those that have been waiting for another video like this. I think it's been almost a year now, so I do apologize for that. Um, I wasn't actually planning on making this video, but as I was setting up for this hunt this morning, I realized that there were quite a few small caveats that uh, I wanted to go over with you guys because there are quite a few ways to fail shinies here in the Cinnabar Mansion surprisingly, so I did want to discuss those, and as you can see, my next target over here for my Fire Red Leaf Green Shiny Living Decks is going to be Growlithe, which is a really, really cool version exclusive here in Fire Red. There's also, you know, Coughing, Wheezing, Grimer, really cool shinies that you can go for, so hopefully this helps someone out. I'm going to show you my party very quickly. Quite a few things to go over here. Um, first and foremost, we do have a Starmie at the lead of the party with the Illuminate ability. I do want to preface that this is absolutely not a necessity for this hunt, it's just very helpful. And I say that because, unfortunately, Staryu is a Leaf Green exclusive, so if you don't have access to trades or Leaf Green or something like that, um, you know, you can basically skip this step, but I did want to mention it because here in the Cinnabar Mansion, number one, encounter rate is very low, and number two, you can't use your bicycle, so unfortunately you will have to, like, manually run back and forth and that is kind of inefficient, so Starmie makes the encounter rate a little bit more bearable with its Illuminate ability, which just doubles the encounter rate. Very, very useful, but like I said, absolutely not a necessity if you can't get your hands on this. The next member is going to be Doduo. Um, the reason that we have this is for the runaway ability, so as you can see, even though Starmie is leading the party, it is KO'd, which means Doduo is going to be the first Pokémon that we throw into battle. Um, the Raticate that you encounter in uh, Cinnabar Mansion are actually at a level where they know Pursuit, and that can be very annoying if they happen to use it while you're trying to manually run away from them. So Runaway just kind of like guarantees your escape, and alternatively, if you just wanted to put a Smoke Ball on, uh, on a Pokemon that you happen to have, that works too. I just, um, you know, have this dope duo for my Shiny Hunts in general. It's also my flyer, as you can see. So if you have a runaway Pokemon, like a Doduo or a Rattata, that works um, really well for dealing with the Raticate. After that, we have Gengar, where, you know, some of the older fans that uh, have seen the Snorlax hunting tutorial from, like, over a year ago now uh, may recall this Gengar from my first ever shiny hunting tutorial. It has remained exactly as it was back then, uh, but the reason that we're using it here is because Growlithe does have takedown, so it's going to be one of those Pokemon that you do not want to use False Swipe on. Obviously a common strategy for Shiny Hunting or capturing Pokemon in general is to False Swipe it to 1 HP, but uh, Growlithe does have takedown and it can KO itself with that, so having the Ghost Typing on Gengar is just really nice for avoiding that entirely. And of course, it has moves like Seismic Toss and Nightshade and Hypnosis, which are great for shiny hunting. Um, I do want to say, uh, Gengar itself is not necessary if you have like a Ghastly or a Haunter that works just as well. Just make sure it's like an adequate level where it's not going to be KO'd by, uh, you know, the Growlithe Fire type moves. But um, if you don't have access to trade, that's completely fine. I understand that not everyone does. So Gengar itself is not strictly required, but you do want a Ghost type. And then uh, the last member here is going to be Polyrath. This is a new addition to the team, and it's specifically for that Damp ability. Now, technically, Polyrath is not um, specifically the Pokemon that you have to use. You could also use Psyduck or Golduck, which are Fire Red exclusives as well. Um, the Damp is the main thing that we want from this Pokemon, but as you'll see in a minute, there's a specific reason that I want Polyrath. Uh, as you can see, Damp prevents self-destruction, which is really handy if you run into coughing or wheezing. Obviously, if they use self-destruct, then you just fail your shiny outright. So, um, this is absolutely a necessity. Anywhere that you're hunting where there's like a Geodude or a coughing or a Voltorb that can explode on you, uh, definitely want to have this in your party. Even if it's not your target and you happen to run into it, uh, you're not going to fail the shiny if you have the Damp Mon. Now, the reason I like Polyrath is because if you fish north of Vermilion City, which is Route 6, there's a little pond there, which uh, is 40% Poliwhirl with the Super Rod, and that's really handy, not only for getting this Pokemon quickly, but it comes with Hypnosis, so just really uh, a great shiny hunting mon in general. And then um, I'm going to be using Brick Break, because Coughing and Wheezing 
are very physically defensive and both resist fighting. So Brick Break is not going to knock them out. Of course, you do have to be careful with like critical hits and damage rolls and stuff like that. But they will survive one Brick Break, and then I'll be able to put them to sleep with Hypnosis. Uh, I did also neglect to mention that I have a P.E.K.K.A. Berry on this Polyrath, and that's because the coughing and the wheezing can uh, poison you. And obviously I need my Polyrath to be alive as long as possible with that damp ability. So um, if I do happen to get poisoned, I can get out of that for free um, with the P.E.K.K.A. Berry and just continue to throw Pokeballs or try to put them to sleep or whatever is happening. So just a little extra safety precaution. Um, but I do want to mention Brick Break is not the optimal strat. Um, unfortunately, I did use my once per game tutor for Seismic Toss on the Gengar here quite a while ago, so that's why I'm going with Brick Break. But if you have Seismic Toss still available, that's even better, because you're not going to risk uh, knocking out the coughing or the wheezing. But that's basically the team there. Um, obviously, lots of little nuances, but I hope that this helps someone out. Let me know if there's any questions that you have or any other tutorials that you'd like me to make. I'd be happy to do those, but I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you'd like to watch me, Shiny Hunt, live, you can do so at twitch.tv forward slash MikeTroid34. I would super appreciate that. But take care, guys. Good luck on your hunts, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye!